Hi, this is Bruce Buffer, your voice of the Oxygen, and you're listening to MMA Mental. This post-fight interview is brought to you by MMA Mental, MMA Worldwide, and YourMMA.TV. It is sponsored by Almighty Fightwear. For more post-fight interviews from the biggest promotions, please subscribe to the MMA Mental YouTube channel. Also, like MMAMental.com, MMA Worldwide, Your MMA, and Almighty Fightwear on Facebook. And on Twitter, please follow at MMA Mental, at Your MMA, and at Almighty MMA. Hello, I'm now joined by Jared the Big Show Rochelle. Jared is coming off of his second UFC victory at UFC Fight Night in Abu Dhabi against Daniel Omelanchek. Jared, thank you very much for joining me. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Congratulations on going 2-0 and in the UFC. Thank you. It's all good to get another one. It was, uh, yeah, well, t- t- like I said, 2-0 two, two and o in the UFC. I mean, you, not a lot of fighters will go 2-0 and o in their first two fights, so it's certainly a, a, a big achievement. Uh, let's talk a little bit about, about the build-up then. How did, you, how did you feel going into the fight, and what were your views on Daniel Lomachek as an opponent? I felt pretty good going into the fight. Uh, I didn't know what to expect going into the fight. How hard was it for you then to stay ready, uh, knowing that your, your fight had been cancelled and that there was a chance you weren't going to get to fight at the end of you staying ready? I'm sorry, what was so, that? You talked you talk there about your earlier fight that was cancelled, but you were asked to stay ready and, and go through the motions if you were still fighting. How hard was that for you, knowing there was a big chance you weren't going to fight? It was hard because, you know, you're so excited and, and you're training, you know, six weeks or whatever up to it and then two weeks before you know you get that call I was actually up at Oklahoma State University doing uh, doing part of my camp up there at the wrestling room and, and you know I just got it I just got uh, warmed up and ready to do a workout and I had a phone call and I went, went and took it and you know my manager said hey your, your opponent got hurt and, and you're not fighting in Chicago now but they're going to fly you up there into the chance that, you know, if something happens, if somebody gets injured or doesn't make way, that you're going to you're gonna have to step in. So, you know, that was a, it was a big blow knowing that, you know, I, I wasn't for sure going to fight. And the chance that I could and they are still taking me up there was uh, and that's to keep me going, keep me motivated to, to keep training hard. But it definitely wasn't quite, you know, the intensity and the excitement that I had knowing I was going to fight. Yeah, that's that's completely understandable. Now, now going back to this fight, then, uh, what what was it? What was the uh, like fighting for you in Abu Dhabi, and what what was the fans like out there? Abu Dhabi was great. It was a great experience. Uh, the fans and stuff were were good. Uh, it, it was kind of wild. It was my first time ever fighting outdoors in an outdoor uh, venue. It was the only the only thing that made it really tough was it was. I think 86 degrees, you know, whenever my fight was going on. So it was hot out and it's humid, you know, it's outdoors. And about halfway through the first first period, you know, we're heavyweights, we sweat a lot anyways. 
I mean, we were completely soaked. It was hard to control the guy. It's hard to, you wanted to, as much as I had him on the ground, had him in positions and control him. I wanted to do, you know, take some chances off some submission finishes, but it's so slick that you, you might just go from a dominant position to being on your back, you know, and so it made it really tough. It just, another factor into the equation of a fight, you know, and, and just kind of make, making the decision then to stay on top and just work from there. Did you feel then, because of the environment then, you had to kind of adapt your game plan uh, because of what you've just said? You couldn't stick with your original game plan? Yeah, you just kind of go by feel out there. I mean, everybody has, everybody seems to have a game plan when they go out to a fight, you know, but you got to have backup plans. you got to be able to think on the fly also, you know, because, like I said, I had ideas going into that fight, and I plan on feeling much better than what I did. And once you got out there and, and things got real slippery and, and, you know, real slick and, and you just got to go into your next next plan, just kind of go by go by feel. And, and my feel was not to do any crazy submission type attempts that would, you know, go from me being to, in a dominant position to being on bottom. And so that, that kind of changed the fight plan. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Now, you obviously, you, you did win the fight. You won, won by decision. You, you, you know, the big factor, of course, was your wrestling. He couldn't deal with your wrestling. I mean, even, I think at one stage, pulled guard, which was silly because he put himself right underneath you and right kind of where you wanted to be. So, the, you know, the fight's gone the way you kind of planned the fight to go. How did you feel after the fight? Any knocks, any injuries? And when would you like to get back in and compete again? Well, after the fight and stuff, I really didn't have many injuries. The, uh, the, the, the worst injuries I had were the ones that were already bugging me before the fight and then I think he got me with one one pretty good shot from the bottom actually I wasn't I wasn't paying attention because I, I I heard the ref say something I looked up and then I got elbowed across the, the left eye but other than that I didn't take much much damage from that fight uh, like I said I just need needed some time to, to heal up from three fight camps in a row but I'd say I'm hoping if I had my say in it, I'd hope to fight in the end of July in San Jose is what I'm aiming for. But, you know, we'll just kind of, we'll see what the UFC says and hopefully hopefully they'll, they'll let me do it then. Have you got uh, your, eye, uh, your eye on anybody that you'd like to fight against? Anybody I'd like to fight? Yeah, have you got anyone in particular you'd like to go up against? <laughs> no, not especially. I mean, I don't have anything out for anyone, but I'd like to move up the ladder. I'd like to get somebody in the top 15. You know, not too many, not too many heavyweights go on a, on a streak, so, you know, anything can happen in the fight to beat guys the size. I would like to get a top 15 guy, maybe maybe Schwab or, uh, you know, somewhere, somewhere right around the 15, 12 to 15 range, somewhere right around that area. I want to you know, I want to improve, I want to get better, I want to move up the ranks, and and hopefully, you know, uh, everything goes right the next fight, and hopefully I'll be fighting to get into the top ten. You know, I'd like to get another two fights in this year, at least. I mean, just to, to point out one thing, of course, you are 10-1, and one, uh, and the guy who took you on now has, has just had a successful UFC debut as well. Would you be interested in rematching with him, or would you like to move on from that? You know, I've, I've thought about it and stuff before. Somebody had mentioned mentioned him uh, before that last fight and you know I said you know depending on the outcome of this fight if I win it which I plan on doing was you know I'm not going to go backward and fight a guy that's uh, hadn't even had his debut yet you know I'm not looking to move backward in the rankings and and uh, you know if, if it ever happens to where I do get matched up with him that'd be great I'd love to go out there and attempt to avenge a loss you know but I'm not going to go out of my way to look for a guy that's, you know, that beat me. That gave me my one loss. If anything, I should thank him because, you know, that one loss really motivated me. And it was my most important fight of my career. It really changed a lot of the ways that I did things and the ways that I trained. And, and uh, so, no, I don't really have any desire to go after him or anything like that. But if, if I, it so happened that we were both around the same ranking or on our way up, you know, sure, I, I would definitely be happy to, but I'm not looking for it. Fair enough. Well, congratulations on going 2-0 in the UFC, and thank you very much for giving me your time today. Yeah, I appreciate you having me on. Uh, my, my pleasure. Before we let you go, I just want to give you a chance to do any shout-outs. So if you'd like to let the listeners know about your Facebook and your Twitter, 
And then, is there, is there any friends, family, sponsors you want to shout out as well? Just like Team Takedown and all my sponsors for my last two fights, Bass Pro and uh, Vertex and Cranium, uh, Cream, all those guys. You know, it's it's great to have so many people backing you and supporting you and, and all the fans and stuff that watch. We really appreciate it. It's why we do it. Brilliant. I can't wait to see you step back in the cage again. Thank you very much. Me too. Thank you.